as institutions and corporations eventually do decide to move in the space, how do you envision them uh, custodying Bitcoin? Do you do you see a possibility where they may hold their own private keys in like some sort of multi-sig configuration? Or will they always use, you know, trusted custodians, but maybe demand like a proof of reserves type uh, concept to verify that they're not maybe rehypothecating the Bitcoin or they haven't lent it out to someone else? I think you'll see, uh, you know, a layer of approaches, but for the most part, holding your own uh, your own private keys or in a multi-sig relationship is going to be much more common with individuals, families, family offices, and and uh, small to mid-sized private corporations. I think that um, with public corporations and large companies, or with uh, governments or agencies uh, and, and mutual funds and the like, when they do it, they will do it with a regulated trustee or a regulated custodian like a Bank of New York Mellon or Fidelity or uh, or big public organization, uh, even potentially FDIC-insured banks like J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs or the like. And the reason why is there's uh, those those organizations aren't even allowed to trust their own CEO. For example, if, you know, if well, if you were the mayor of New York and you lived in New York, would you want the mayor of New York to walk around with the private keys to $50 billion worth of New York's Bitcoin? No. Like what happens when the mayor of New York uh, gets unelected and there's a new mayor of New York? What if the old mayor won't give the keys to the new mayor? Right. You, you would think, ah, no, okay, so then you get to this issue of, well, I guess we need three people. Okay, would you want three government officials, you know, making, you know, minimum wage or whatever, would you want them to hold $100 billion worth of uh, Bitcoin for, you know, for the FBI or, the, or, or whatever the agency is? What, what's to keep them from just taking it? Right. You don't even trust you don't trust your own employees. Right. Do, do you really want the bank to let a bank teller take two billion dollars of gold bullion home with them at 5 p.m. every night and then bring it back? No. no. So with those kind of organizations, you tend to actually have to have a, a you have to construct something with checks and balances. A lot of checks and balances. They're built into Sarbanes-Oxley controls and other IT controls. Like, there's a segregation of duties where the person, a lot of times the big organization, the person that has the power to grant you access doesn't have the power to move the money. It's two other people, and those two people or those three people, they have to do it, but in conjunction with the outside, you know, an outside vendor. And on the vendor side, there's two or three people that have to sign off. And then there's a, and then there's a set of processes like everything is logged, everything, right? Like, like uh, the, uh, you can get fired in a in a bank for not logging the fact that you changed the permission of one person, from you know, you know, security clearance three point two to security clearance three point three. You don't have to have done anything. You just you can get fired for having made it temporarily possible for five minutes to, for someone else to actually change that permission or, or not log it, right? So they've got layers and layers and layers of controls because um, they, need, they need to have a separation of power and checks and balances. So, so for, it's just like um, another example, you know, your, your grandfather's life savings you know, he's got his private keys. He's on the deathbed in the hospice, you know. And now how, when he dies, okay, how do you get the money? <laughs> okay, so you're, okay, so there's 12 kids. Okay, so, the tw so are the 12 kids going to pick one of them to have the keys? Or are they going to say, I think we'd rather have uh, Fidelity or some trust company hold, you know, the, uh, the, read the last will and testament. Like the, the escrow company and the lawyer, they're going to read the last will and then the keys are with the trust company. And, you know, what happens if your grandfather decided that he wanted to leave the Bitcoin to the 12 kids, 16 grandkids, and then allow for a bequest to 37 organizations 
and also to, you know, to potentially the heirs of the grandkids. It, 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 you know, it's pretty obvious, right? It's like who in your family exactly is going to be carrying the the keys around? And, and, and the answer, it's an institutional thing. So, so um, when you get to an institutional scale, you're going to have institutional grade custodians that are expected to outlast all, all the people. You will get fired as the CEO or you will quit your job. You will leave as the mayor, right? You're, uh, if you're uh, running $10 billion of money for a pension funds, you know, there's no way that the pension fund wants you to show up and say, hey, no worries, I have the $10 billion in my hardware wallet, but I gave the extra key to my cousin. Like, no, no way, right? So, um, so this is a blessing and a curse, right? I mean, if you're a hardcore maximalist, you would say, well, we just liked it when it was just 100 million individuals and they had their own money in their head or their own money in their hardware wallet. Yeah, well, uh, that's the blessing. The curse is if you actually want New York City and Chicago and San Francisco and the United States and uh, 10,000 publicly traded institutions do all buy Bitcoin and embrace Bitcoin, then you're going to have to deal with the control structures of, of those companies. They're going to deal with, uh, you know, big banks, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Fidelity, the, the massive institutions. And um, I, I don't think it's a problem. I think that um, everybody will have the ability to take custody of their own Bitcoin. So if you bought Bitcoin through Fidelity and then you want to put it on your own hardware wallet between ages 40 and 75, you can do it. And if you get a terminal diagnosis of cancer and you feel like you'll be dead in the next six months, you're probably going to take it from your hardware wallet and you're going to put it with your escrow agent or your lawyer or your estate manager or someone and you're going to leave instructions to your loved ones because that's the right thing to do. Or if I get Parkinson's or if I get Alzheimer's, you know, if you diagnosed me with Alzheimer's and I my hand shook and I didn't think or, or I was, you know, not going to be able to work on a typewriter or, or a keyboard, I would probably actually put it with a custodian, right, for obvious reasons. So, so the ability to move the Bitcoin between uh, personal custody, multi-sig, to, to move it to, a, to a, a small custodian, a large custodian, I think that's what keeps the entire uh, network uh, honest, and that's what, keeps, uh, that's what makes the, uh, imbues the asset with integrity.